Hey up YouTube, real quick intro, I know I say that every time, that should be my uh, catchphrase, not A up, but yeah, I'm going to keep it real short. Plants for the allotment today, I'm finally back down in the shed. Um, plans for today, I was originally just going to come down and uh, feed the chickens, and I think that, that that was pretty much it to be honest. Uh, my back's not up to much at the moment. I'm still really badly. Um, not that anybody's bothered. I've just been signed off for another six weeks, pending more treatment. So, but anyway, um, I'm going to try one of the uh, one of the fellow allotment holders has just given me some a tray of uh, winter cabbage. So I'm going to try and get those in. Um, it means prepping a bed that wasn't ready. Um, so we'll see how my back goes. Uh, but the main, but the other main focus for today, before that, before they were very graciously gifted to me, was to talk a little bit about. Not got it here. I'll have to find it. Winter washing. It's. Um, I've got two. Apparently, we've got two dry days now. So I'm going to get on, get my sprayer out, and I'm going to get all my trees and fruit bushes winter washed. So that's that's for, that's job number one because um, that needs as many dry hours. It doesn't have to be warm, but it needs as many dry hours as possible on the plants. So I'm going to crack on. Um, I'm, I, I may well not time lapse this. I might record it live. It's a quick job with a couple of pointers I need to talk about with regards to. Um, sorry, I know the lighting's crap. Um, with regards to sort of how much you apply and things like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go get the bottle, I'm going to go get some water, I'm just going to use rainwater, um, and we'll talk and we'll, we'll get some mixed up and we'll get it uh, on the trees, on the fruit trees, on the fruit bushes, uh, where else am I going to put it? I think that's pretty much it. And I need to remove, I need to move that uh, citrus tree inside somewhere, I've got another two at home, I'm not overly bothered. Uh, so yeah, I'll see you in a bit. Okay YouTube, and we are back. Now what I have hopefully in frame for you is what I use for spraying. Um, generally it's a good idea to have one for feed and one for, or one for food and one for, for um, for pesticides, I don't use any spray feeds, but I do have one that I use for weed killer. I know that's a bit of a swear word to some people, but I do. And then I have this one which I use for neem oil and winter washing. Just saves on uh, on confusion. Um, but this, I'll put a link to the dis in the description. Yes, you can get spray bottles from Wilco's. Yes, they work. Um, this I actually got in last year's Black Friday sale, actually, believe it or not, uh, filming on today. This is Black Friday, and it is, although same thing, a world apart. For first things first, you've got a nice handy dandy, you're not going to be able to see it on camera, nice handy dandy little, little measuring cup, um, which makes the neem oil thing a lot easier. This thing you take off and you can pop on, uh, and you can rotate it round for what it's actually got in it. Sorry, I just realised I'm talking about something that you can't see. That little thing there. It's a nice little added feature, that. Um, but this is a hose lock one. And where it differs from the Wilkinson's ones is, once again, there's nothing wrong with them. They do work. Um, but this one holds its pressure a damn sight better. Um, and it pressurises a lot higher. Um, so you can use it for longer in between pumps. Most importantly with something like this, uh, you see around here, can you guys see it on film? No, let me just move you down a little bit, sorry. You see here you've got a max fill line. That is there for a reason. You need this headspace on these things. Um, you need that, purely and simply, to, to put the air in to apply the pressure to the water to send it out as a nice pressurised stream. Don't cross the streams. Anyway, this is the winter wash I use. I use it once a year, about this time of year, November to February. I'd like to wait, I do like to wait until the leaves have fallen, but this year a lot of the trees are dragging the heels, and with the wet weather we keep having, it needs done. 
So, this one, we've got a 5 litre sprayer here. This winter wash is 50 mil to every litre of water. The amount of trees and shrubs I've got outside, I will need at least one full one. So, get the, uh, the thing. You see the thing up here holds 25 mil, so that's nice and handy dandy. I'll just get the cap off. So we'll tip that in. And then all you do to refill your bottle is you actually just squeeze the bottle. And it fills up nicely for you. It's another 25, so that's one litre. Just realise you might not be able to see that. Another 25. I'll do it off, I'll try and do it on camera one more time. Another 25, drop down. And that's two litres. And I'll just race through these next ones. Three. And last two, five litres. This stuff is relatively inexpensive. Um, I think this bottle was between five and seven pounds. Um, you only use it once a year, so for, you, for, you, for you, let's say it's ten pounds. Let's just round it off nice and evenly. Um, let's say it's ten pounds. So for you ten pounds, you get roughly, if you're only using five litres, you get and it, uh, three years worth of wash so that's it. it it really is as simple as that so that's this filled and ready to go obviously it needs pumping but I'll do that when I get outside um, you want it on a nice fine nozzle on your sprayer um, which once again I'll sort out once we're outside so I'm going to set the camera up outside because I want to talk about you know it's going to sound really silly but how to wash your tree um, because you know it's not just a fine mist over you do have to pay attention to a few things so I'm going to take you outside with me hopefully we can get you a nice angle where you can see what I'm doing and we'll crack on see you in a bit hey up YouTube you may see a rather strange looking apple somewhere around there in the tree um, this is going to be my first ever attempt at doing sort of a, a multi-angle thing what I am going to do I know that I'm going to get questions about why are you winter washing that's going to get covered in one of the new bite size series this is sort of the act of winter washing so what I'm going to do is I'm going to record me winter washing this tree uh, I'm going to talk about it a little bit you see I hopefully see that nice fine spray on the nozzle um, now this is going to be recording that's going to be recording so hopefully my editing skills are getting up to the point where I'm going to be able to mash the two together um, and you'll be able to hear what I'm saying so we'll crack on so, when it comes to winter washing, really, I need to knock the face from the sun so I can see what I'm doing. It'll be a good start. So you start from the top of the tree down. You do have to give the tree a proper, proper soaking. It's like I said, it's not just that's winter washed. That's you know, it's it, you have to give it a proper, proper soak. You need to pay. And the reason I've got the action camera, you need to pay proper attention. So all your little joints, all your little grooves, all your little ins and outs. Um, because otherwise your winter wash is just not going to be effective. Uh, and basically once it starts running or dripping down the tree, that's when you know you've got enough on. You keep going until it's running down the tree. Make sure all your branches are covered. This stuff, your winter wash, is to help prevent insects, codling moth, uh, all sorts of bits and pieces, all sorts of little nasties. Like I say, make sure all these little joints are all getting a proper, proper soaking. Come all the way around your tree, give it all a real good soak. Uh, the, my grease bands do need redoing as well, so that might be another job if I can find the grease bands in the lockups. Um, because obviously they were put away whilst I was doing the shed. And I've just looked for them and at the moment, can't find them. Uh, this grease band is pretty much, these grease bands are pretty much spent now, so it does need to do it. Give the tree a real good salt. Don't worry about overspray it, it's not a weed killer, it's not going to harm your plants, to the best of my knowledge anyway. It's not going to hurt anything that it's not supposed to get on. So as soon as you see, start to see the liquid running down the bark, and it's the bark you're focusing on, 
not the leaves as soon as you start to see that that you know that that's had a, a, enough um, and hopefully it does dry quite quickly so hopefully in these two days of, of dry weather we're supposed to be having it's it's not particularly warm but it is dry hopefully that will be enough so you can see hopefully that that's actually had quite a soak and it should be about there make sure that all the base all around the bottom of the tree make sure that that's all got plenty Where you banded everything like that, you know, it helps against against fungal infections. It helps against uh, insects. So all your trees, all your fruit bushes, all want a good soak. So I'm going to go around and I'm going to do that. I'm going to do my red currants, my blueberries, my blackberries. Everything, everything gets a winter wash. See, I've parked you over the top of my gooseberry. So excuse me a moment. Everything gets a real good soak. Don't be shy with this stuff, otherwise it won't be effective. The last thing you want is something like cuddly moth or grapples. Uh, yeah, so once again, here are red currants. Hopefully these will be some nice big bushes this year. A bit, a bit of a let down, but it was their first year in. So I'll see you in a bit YouTube, I'm going to go around and do the rest of the trees, I'm not going to record them all. So I'll see you in a bit. Hey YouTube, back down the plot again, not doing another intro, just sort of saying, you know, change of attire. New hat, it's officially cold, like, even in the shed it's reading 10 degrees, so it's pretty cold. Um, stay open, will you? I need the light. Um, yeah, so today is a redoubling my effort, um, obviously as you know I had to leave last time. Uh, door's not going to stay open, hang on. Uh, no, that's... I've just installed a light switch. Not that it makes a great deal of difference, but hey-ho. Um, redoubling my efforts to get all the grease bands on. Um, we're going to uh, I've put them on, and then when I do the winter wash video, I'm going to talk about what a grease band... what the purpose is behind grease banding your fruit trees. Obviously, you don't do your bushes. You'll be there forever and a day going around each individual little stick. I suppose, in theory, if you get the grease paint, which I also use, you could, if you wanted, wrap, go around all the bottoms of all the little sticks, but most of the pests are that for uh, are airborne. So, we're going to crack on. I'm going to raid the lock up because the grease bands definitely aren't in the shed. So, I'm going to raid the lock up, find the grease bands, and next time you see me, we'll be at the base of one of the bigger trees so that we can talk about what I do and why I do it. and and things like that as I'm doing it, so I'll see you in a bit. Right. Cheddars, I'm back. So, grease band. Comes folded over. A big strip. Like this. All you do is whilst it's folded over, don't, un don't open it up until it's absolutely necessary. You do want a slight overlap. So measure it up against your tree and then cut sort of a centimetre back. And then get some twine ready. Like I said, this stuff is messy, messy, so that's going to be long enough. Just cut it off. You can't add it on. Not easily, anyway. Piece of string ready. So, a bit. Open it up. Or at least try to open it up. And this is where things start to get messy. I'll try and use the same spot, at least I do. So there is an overlap, I have done an overlap. And so, so you're starting to see why, or you will, you'll be starting to see why I add the extra fruit grease. Um, I've only been doing this a couple of years and I can't get it tight enough. I mean, 
you could always tie your, tie your string really tight. The tree at the end of the day is, is, is hopefully stronger than the string. Um, I like to, to not do that where possible. Leave it kind of loose so that the tree can continue to grow. And I'll do another string around the bottom as well. So you're not strangling your tree, but you should hold the grease band at least long enough to paint on some extra grease around the top and the bottom, closing up any gaps. Um, this is not sort of my idea, it's not so, yeah, it's something that undoubtedly a lot of gardeners do. Um, but I, I actually got it from Castle Hill Garden. He's, he's, this is his technique, although I think he ties his knots a lot stronger than mine, but you know, they, they're strong enough for me. And you get your fruit grease, once again, I mean this stuff is sticky, sticky, horrible stuff. Get plenty of it and just paint around your seed. Trying to make sure that you fill in any gaps that you may, that you may have. Grease will help with holding on. The grease band. So once again, around the top and the bottom. First proper proper frost last night, so everything's a bit cold. What we do want to do, I am having a problem with my strings at the moment, is I might pop that one back off. new one on. So what you don't want is the string offering away for the creepy crawlies to get around your grease band. Otherwise all this is for, for nothing. Don't be shy with this stuff. It's cheap enough. You do it once maybe twice a year. Whacked on, up the tree. Just come round in front of you. Do. Let's trim off some of this wire and I'll just put grease, fruit grease on my neck. It's going to look sexy. And there we go, that's one side done. I could come all the way down here and just do one big one, but that, that's going to be really fiddly. And that then, all the way down to the bottom of the tree, the other issue you're going to have is it's going to get mucky fast. So you're going to end up changing it sooner rather than later. So I'm just going to do one more and then I'm going to shut the camera off and do the rest. And that is going to be the end of today's video. So, what you're going to have, hopefully, I'll just put that without checking it. Oh yes, plenty, more than enough. Um, is you're going to have winter washing. You're going to have fruit tree greasing, and that should be your, your, your winter your fruit trees prepped. Um, I, I might, at some point, get around to filming a pruning video because this apple tree, well this apple tree doesn't need pruning. Uh, 
the only thing I need to prune really is my fruit trees. So, uh, my stone fruit trees, which you don't do until spring. So, my apple tree is done, my pear tree is done, and my other apple needs a couple of branches taking off it, but not much. So, I shan't be doing any pruning this year, but we've spoken in a previous video about the desirable shape, or the, the, the best shape to aim for, which is the shape of a wine goblet, or wine glass, if you're not posh like not me. Um, to try and achieve that shape as much as you can leaving a hollow in the middle and removing any crossed over branches you can find uh, um, but aside from that folks like I say I think also I might have a guest appearance from one of the gents in the uh, conversation shed group I think he might be doing a video where he's going to talk about uh, fruit, uh, fruit duh, where he's going to talk about tree pruning. Um, it, I mean, the trees he does is, is more commercial, but the theory is the same. You know, you're aiming for the same tree and things like that. So we'll see. We'll see. He's, he's, he's expressed an interest. He wants to be involved. So I've said if he wants to, he's more than welcome to. So like I said, the practices are pretty much the same with regards to uh, commercial tree and allotment tree, or homegrown tree, or garden tree. The practices are the same, you aim the same shape for the same outcome, which is to maximise your fruit crop. So until next time, folks. I'll see you later.